Kharalare Shakharadale Aralabaradale Kharadala As we lay aside our crowns, O Father, and lay aside the work of our hands, we even lay aside our idols, O Father, and the masks that we wear and the and the false and the falsehoods that we are, O Father God, at your feet, O Lord. Do a new work in us, O Father. Do a new work in us, O Lord Jesus. Oh, do your wonder working power in us, O Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father, as your children expectantly wait on you, O Father, may you reward each according to their faith, O Father. And may you be their treasured portion, O Father, their only cup, O Father. And let them exalt you, O Father, and say, I have seen the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Yes, O Lord, we have seen your goodness today. Thank you, O Lord Jesus. sins of the world the world that you have created was waiting for the love to redeem and you have redeemed us through your love in Jesus Christ we bless you father in Jesus name we pray amen give the Lord a mighty hand I clap offering you may be seated in the presence of God. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate your worship. Powerful time. How many of you are truly happy to be in the house of the Lord? Whoa. This is actually the beginning of a three-day series on the meditation on the cross of Jesus Christ. So we're going to be here tomorrow and the day after, which is known as Good Friday service as well. We will commence at the same time, probably a little earlier so that we could have more time to worship and to praise God. Say it louder. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, Amen. the Lord has a word for you. Amen. And the word shall not only inform you, but it shall transform you from the inside out. Get ready, for the Lord is about to speak to you through his holy word. Say a louder, say a louder, amen. We're going to talk about the cross. Cross is now known as a fashion symbol. Whether they are believers or non-believers, whether they are Christians or non-Christians, they tend to wear them around their neck. 
They tend to wear them as a, um, as a pendant, as a earring, some of them I've seen. Some of them adorn it as a tattoo in their body. Some of them would keep as a tombstone. Some of them would keep them as an entry point to their house. Whether you go to a church, you will have a steeple. And then on top of the steeple, there is a cross. It is an identification for some of them to call themselves as Christians. And it is easy for people to identify. It is a place of worship for Christians. Why? Because there is a big red cross up there. I want you to understand cross is not just a symbol cross is the way of life cross is what the way of life people right meaning somebody has done it as an example and that's how Jesus started the journey and through which all of us die every day to our flesh and live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Say it louder. Say it louder. Amen. Are we on life? Thank you, Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, cross calls us to die every day, to resurrect every day with the same power that brought Jesus back to life. Say it louder. Amen. Cross is also a symbol of torture. A symbol of what? Torture. Not just a symbol of suffering, not just a symbol of love, but it's also a symbol of torture. Cross was an instrument of torture. Was a what? Instrument of torture. What blows my mind is this. The God who created the universe had to die on the cross so helpless that he had to cry to the father saying father father why have you forsaken they broke bread and then he went on to betray jesus christ so it was not the betrayal of G judas carriot it was not the denial of peter nor that verdict of the Jewish people release Barabbas crucify Jesus Christ it was the love of the father that allowed Jesus Christ to be crucified on that cross so I can boldly say that cross is now a divine symbol of love is now a what divine symbol of love cross is where the truth is embedded together with that wood the truth is embedded together with that wood the way in which the person who was crucified on the cross would die is known as acidification that they will hang on that cross like that. They will breathe in. Correct, no? They will take a deep breath. And every time they take a deep breath, they keep on pulling themselves with the weight that pulls them down. At the mercy of certain Roman soldiers, certain people's bones, the leg bones were broken so that they may die sooner. But in the case of Jesus Christ, not even one bone was broken. He died in such a manner to fulfill what was prophesied about him. Psalm 22 is a psalm of agony and is a psalm of fulfillment. Is a psalm of trial, is also a psalm of triumphant victory. Is a psalm that represents prophecy and is also a psalm that concludes the fulfillment of the same. Thousand years before Jesus Christ 
was crucified. David wrote this psalm. If you read the psalm, it says, For the director of music, to the tune, the door of the morning, a psalm of David. In all the psalms, you don't read a messianic prophetic psalm like this. But if you ask the Jewish scholars, they would say, this is normal to us. Why? Moses sang songs, was a prophet. Miriam took the tambourine. She was known as a prophetess. She sang songs. Whenever the priest wanted to do something, they asked people to play the music. Do you remember the story when Elisha was praying? He said, call me the harpist. And then when the harpist started playing, he began to prophesy saying, you will neither see wind nor rain, yet the valley shall be filled with water. These are what is known as prophetic psalms. But particularly Psalm 22 is not just a prophetic psalm, but it is also known as a messianic psalm. As a what? Messianic psalm. A psalm that talks about the Messiah, Jesus Christ. The song that talks about redemption. The song that talks about salvation. The song that talks about that fulfillment of the plan that Father had to redeem the world from the clutches of sin. A messianic psalm in nature a guy from the tribe of Judah known as David wrote, not really having a clue that in that same line, Jesus Christ shall be born one day. From line of David, Jesus came into existence. Lion of Judah, to you in Bethlehem, they said. I don't know if you can understand certain things that are written in the scripture in a symbolic and figurative way. Today I want to talk about something that's known as the worm. Can we talk? Yes? All right. Let's read. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Can I, can I talk more about crucifixion? David prophesied a thousand years before Jesus actually died on the cross. But David also talked about crucifixion that was not in practice 600 years later than his time. The guy wrote the Psalm 22 as though he had a vivid dream and vision. That he wrote it in detail that is so scary to someone who reads it. And because right after this, Psalm 23, a very famous psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. And then Psalm 24, lift up your gates, O ancient doors, let the King of glory come in. You can go on and about, but we can always miss the important psalm that connects us directly to the Messiah. Why are you so far from saving in order to save the world, he had no help on that cross. Hello? Yes or no, sir? He says, why are you far from saving me? So far from my cries of anguish. My God, I cry out by day and you do not answer. By night, I find no rest. You are enthroned as a holy one. You are the one that Israel praises. In you our ancestors put their trust. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and they were saved. 
He knew they trusted and they were not put to shame. Listen to this. He says, but I'm a worm and not a man. Can a king write like that? He wrote not about himself. He wrote about Jesus Christ. Jesus was treated not as a human when he was tried before the priest, before the Roman leadership. He was not given the civil rights nor the legal rights. There was no humanity involved. The verdict was proclaimed or declared before he was even tried. He had no choice to defend. The Bible says he kept his mouth so shut, so much like a sheep that's being led to the slaughter's house. When Pilate asked, do you have anything to say in response? Jesus didn't want to. He was there to fulfill the master's plan. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God. The important part is next. Who loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus voluntarily gave himself to die on that cross. Like I told you earlier, it was not the betrayal of Judas Cariot, not the denial of Peter, not the verdict of the Jewish community, but it was the love of God the Father that crucified Jesus Christ on that cross. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it is for love Christ died for you and for me say a louder say a louder amen and then galatians chapter 5 the sixth verse the last part the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself in love there are many people claim to be god Many people, even Buddhism, talks about suffering. And Buddhism also talks about go through the suffering to end the suffering. There are similar parallels you can draw, but not all of it is true because there is only one person who died on the cross for you. There is only one person who took up the sins of the world. There is only one person who was buried and came back to life. His name is Jesus Christ. Say a louder. You better understand that. Muhammad did not die for you. Jesus died for you. Hey, I believe the Lord is speaking to you and to me. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is a serious matter. Let us not be playful, but let us focus on it with grace. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go back to Psalm 22. Thank you, Jesus. All my bones are on display, 17th verse. People stare and gloat over me. Little to nothing, he had no clothes on his body. He was hanging on a cross beside two thieves who were actually punished for something that they have done. But the guy in the middle didn't do anything. He committed no sin. He committed no crime, but yet he died carrying your crime 
and your punishment on that cross. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots of my comment. That's exactly what happened. The Roman soldiers wanted the garment of Jesus Christ. They wanted a piece of it because it was valuable. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. Jesus cried, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? If you read the recordings in the Gospels, it is not as detailed as Psalm 22. They give you a little gist of what has happened. And different author gives different perception of what they saw and how they wrote it to their set of audience. But David wrote it prophetically without seeing face to face, seeing things in the spirit and wrote it prophetically about what was going to happen thousand years after. How many years after? Thousand years after. Fifteenth verse. My mouth is dried up like a pot shred. And my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Fourteenth verse. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted within me. Whew. I will explain this on Good Friday. God willing. This is a detailed picture of what actually happened on that cross. How Jesus actually died. Asking for water. Tongue sticking to the roof because of dryness, dehydration. Most of the people who are stapled to that cross, they often die of dehydration. Even when he asked for water, they gave him vinegar. Isn't it? They were mocking at Jesus, saying that he thought he saved everybody, but he could not save himself. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, the important part is next, who loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus voluntarily gave himself to die on that cross. Like I told you earlier, it was not the betrayal of Judas Cariot, not the denial of Peter, not the verdict of the Jewish community, but it was the love of God the Father that crucified Jesus Christ on that cross. Turn to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, it is for love Christ died for you and for me. Say a louder. Say a louder, Amen. And then, Galatians chapter 5. The sixth verse, the last part. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself 
in love. There are many people claim to be God. Many people, even Buddhism, talks about suffering. And Buddhism also talks about go through the suffering to end the suffering. There are similar parallels you can draw, but not all of it is true because there is only one person who died on the cross for you. There is only one person who took up the sins of the world. There is only one person who was buried and came back to life. His name is Jesus Christ. Say it louder. You better understand that. Muhammad did not die for you. Jesus died for you. Hey, I believe the Lord is speaking to you and to me. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is a serious matter. Let us not be playful, but let us focus on it with grace. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go back to Psalm 22. Thank you, Jesus. All my bones are on display, 17th verse. People stare and gloat over me. Little to nothing, he had no clothes on his body. He was hanging on a cross beside two thieves who were actually punished for something that they have done. But the guy in the middle didn't do anything. He committed no sin. He committed no crime, but yet he died carrying your crime and your punishment on that cross. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots of my comment. That's exactly what happened. The Roman soldiers wanted the garment of Jesus Christ. They wanted a piece of it because it was valuable. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. Jesus cried, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? If you read the recordings in the Gospels, it is not as detailed as Psalm 22. They give you a little gist of what has happened. And different author gives different perception of what they saw and how they wrote it to their set of audience. But David wrote it prophetically without seeing face to face, seeing things in the spirit and wrote it prophetically about what was going to happen thousand years after. How many years after? Thousand years after. 15th verse. My mouth is dried up like a pot shred and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. 14th verse. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax it has melted within me. Whew. I will explain this on Good Friday. God willing. This is a detailed picture of what actually happened on that cross.
cross how Jesus actually died asking for water tongue sticking to the roof because of dryness dehydration most of the people who are stapled to that cross they often die of dehydration even when he asked for water they gave him vinegar isn't it they were mocking at Jesus saying that he thought he saved everybody but he could not save himself say this with me Lord Jesus Christ I now understand the depth and the meaning of what went on on that day when you died may I never walk away from you spirit of the living God please help me to focus on the cross every day of my life say aloud Isaiah 53 verse 9 He was assigned to the grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Who gave him the tomb? Joseph of Arimathea, right? He was influential enough to get the body of Jesus to be put in the tomb. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth yet it was the Lord's will to crush him like I said not the betrayal of Judas Cariot not the denial of Peter not the verdict of the Jews but it was God's plan the love of the father that led Jesus to die on the cross for all of us somebody say aloud up yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer though the Lord makes his life a what an offering for sin so cross was not just an instrument of torture now cross becomes an altar where Jesus paid the price and contributed everything whereby you and I have nothing else to contribute but to believe in him say aloud up say aloud amen so now cross is not just a tot symbol of torture it has now become an altar where Jesus put himself to give an atonement sacrifice for the sins of the whole world so that we will have access to the father who is seated on the throne in heaven say aloud up you see now that's why I don't like when people keep crossing their house with somebody still hanging. That person who hung on the cross is not there anymore. It was an altar. And what was sacrificed on the altar pleased God. And that brought us salvation. Say aloud. You see that? For an artifact, you can see, oh, this is beautiful. This is how Jesus died. You know, when I was studying about that, you know, Leonardo da Vinci, the guy who painted the Last Supper, he was not just an artist, he was also a philosopher. He was also a thinker of his time. The guy went into the chapel once and he looked at the altar, the light came. And he said, okay, I need to do this. And he got the inspiration to paint. He found somebody on the streets of Milan, brought him, painted Jesus Christ. Took him so many days to paint that. 
And then it took him so many years after to find Peter, James and all. It is said that it took him 11 good years to find Judas Iscariot. Because everything that he painted is under the impression of what he perceived Jesus to be. That's not actually Jesus. It was his perception of how Jesus might have looked like. So in his understanding, because Judas betrayed, he had to be a cruel person, sadistic. He walked around the city every day for 11 years to find a right face to draw Judas carrier and finally he found and then he painted it but the fact is this whatever he painted about the Lord's Supper is his understanding and that's not exactly how it went down that day yes or no sir that's not exactly how it went that night Every Christian home has a picture of the Lord's Supper. That's not how it went. It's the picture of Da Vinci. We've been fooled. Oh, I will talk about it tomorrow. I'll talk about it tomorrow. He died as an offering for your sin and my sin people forgetting the cross they're focusing on the last supper Hello. you know what is important about the last supper I'll talk about it tomorrow God willing it's not the food they ate it's the words of Jesus Christ that is important say a louder amen to that say a louder and let's read this he will see his offspring and prolong his days and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand listen to the 11th verse and after he had suffered he will see the light of life and be satisfied talking about resurrection some of the Gospels record Jesus as light and some of the Gospels it records as you and I are the light of the world. It is how one perceived it to be. How do I understand light? Because I see light fall on my skin. I see light around me then I see it is light. So you cannot be a light of this world unless you allow the light to shine in you and through you first say a louder say a louder amen in the similar manner you cannot be a christian unless you are washed by the blood of jesus for washing of the blood you need to accept the death of jesus christ on that cross say a louder amen without the death there is no burial without the burial there is no resurrection say a louder does that make sense this is the plan of God that he will see the light of life therefore I will give him the portion among the great he will divide the spoils with the strong that is a figurative of speech right because he poured out his life unto death he was numbered with the transgressors for he bore the sin of many equal to sins of the world. Hebrews 10, 10 says, Jesus Christ died once for all. Say a loud amen. The past sins, the present sins, and the future sins. Somebody say a loud up. He died once and for all. He died as a bore sin of many and made intercession for the transgressions what is that word intercession here implies he substituted you on that cross this is what is known as penal substitution what is known as what 
penal substitution. He substituted you on that cross so that you don't have to die that cruel some death on that cross. You can believe in the death of Jesus Christ and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and you can have eternal life today. Say a louder. Say a louder amen. You see now, this is it. I really wish there was continuity in what I was preaching today because of the technology, you know, technical issues got cut. But I will try to summarize it tomorrow. And then we will go on to the next part of the meditation on the cross. What have we learned about the cross? Cross is not a fashion symbol. Cross is the way of life. Cross is not an instrument of torture. Cross is the altar. Cross represents kingdom culture. So we are called to follow the culture of the cross. We deny ourselves.